Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door, formerly Nature in Your Backyard. We're trademarking and we're going to a new title, but it's the same good biology, the same good science, the same good natural history. So we've been following monarch butterflies, the insect with the most amazing migration phenomena in, in the whole world. There's no insect that migrates in, in any kind of fashion like the monarch butterfly does. And here is the nature that we've been looking at. This is my monarch butterfly film studio and rearing area. I showed you how to build one of these in one of my previous episodes. I showed you how to make one of these. I told you it'd be great to use something like this and I have a variety of different ways to do it. And we started looking at milkweed and we went to finding eggs. We've talked about caterpillars. We've talked about caterpillar anatomy. We've talked about instars. And now this episode today, we're going to look at what happens when the caterpillar is finished eating. When he's gone through his five instars, he's gone to his final moat, he's done eating, what happens next? And so what happens is they form a J larva and a chrysalis. And we're going to look at that in detail in this episode. So stay tuned. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're going to find. And there's a make this invasive. There's a top. Dogwoods are flowering. And I just took a couple swipes of terrestrial environment uh, produce seed pollen and it's before we talk about the J larva and the chrysalis let's backtrack where we started we began looking for milkweed and we learned how to identify it and how to find it and once we've located some milkweed then we could go on to seeing if we could find eggs and larva in the next episode, I show you how to find eggs located under leaves, laid one at a time, and how to perhaps identify and find some of the early instar larvae as well. And then we followed the growth of the caterpillar, and we learned about its anatomy. We learned how it changes from a first instar larva hatching out of its egg and eating its eggshell. We learn how it moves from stage to stage by molting its exoskeleton. And then we saw it change from a second instar to a third instar to a fourth and to a fifth instar. And so now we've got fifth instar larvae and they're big and they're fat and all of a sudden they stop eating. So what is going to happen now? So one of the first things that I observed is that the late instar larva, when they finish eating, they'll just stop eating and they'll start wandering around and they'll tend to try to climb. And it looks like they're always looking for the highest place. If you have them on a plant stem in a critter cage or if you have them on leaves, they'll climb up to the top of the cage. Once they get to the top of the cage, they'll tend to stop. And I've watched them just sit there horizontally along the top of the screen or the top of the cage, and they uh, will spend hours not moving. And then I've noticed that they'll start to produce silk. And we learned that underneath the head of the caterpillar is a spinneret. And that spinneret is used to produce silk. We know that moths will produce a pupa that's inside a silken container. So silk moths, for example, will spin that silk around them as a caterpillar and they'll form a pupa inside. Modern caterpillars don't form a silken container. They produce a chrysalis, which is their pupal stage. And they do it by actually shedding that caterpillar exoskeleton. So after the caterpillar has been upside down on the upper part of the container or against the screen, it'll begin to spin a silken pad. 
And the silken pad, well, you can see that there is a number of fibers and they concentrate right in the middle. And at first it seems kind of an aimless spreading of silk. And then the silk is concentrated into a center part. And then the caterpillar will move its rear section, which we know as the 9th through 11th fused segments of the abdomen, and grab onto that silken pad with the hooks on its rear two prolegs. And those two rear prolegs will come together and the caterpillar will stay there for a while and then suddenly it will hang into a J. And this is the stage, of course, that we call the J larva. And the caterpillar will go through a miraculous transformation. To me, almost as miraculous as a transformation from the chrysalis to the adult. The caterpillar will hang for about 24 hours before the last part of this transformation occurs. And there must be so many biological things going on underneath that skin. And I've watched them and they'll twitch and they'll move a little bit and they'll head bob. And if I touch them, they'll curl up finally after laying still for quite some time. I'll see them start wiggling and they'll start moving. And this whole transformation will happen in just a couple minutes, this last process of shedding that caterpillar black and yellow and white exoskeleton. It'll split right down the back behind his head. And the caterpillar, which is now half caterpillar, half chrysalis, will shake and wiggle and shake, and it'll push that skin basically up to its prolegs, almost into a circle, and then slowly, slowly, drop their body down again until it's in the form of a J. And its final act as a caterpillar or half chrysalis, it'll shake that last piece of skin off. It'll spend 10 or 12 days as a chrysalis. When it first shakes that skin off, it doesn't look like the chrysalis that it will be for the next 10 or so days. It, you can see a lot of features, a lot of segments. You can see through it. And here's some different views of that chrysalis just after it comes out. So what's happening underneath the outer covering of that chrysalis? Well, basically, everything inside is liquefied into a protein-rich soup, except a certain number of cells that we call imaginal cells. Yes. Biologists sometimes refer to these cells as imaginal discs, and they've been in this organism since its egg stage. These cells don't dissolve, and they will start to divide. There might be 50 cells in an imaginal disc that will develop into an eye structure, or a leg structure, or a wing structure. So there's an imaginal disc for each of the parts of the adult monarch butterfly. And those cells have been there ever since the egg stage. And all the other cells are going to dissolve inside this chrysalis to form this soup of protein and nutrition that will allow them to essentially reassemble into a brand new organism, the monarch adult which looks nothing like the caterpillar. There's no similarities at all. You could never look at the caterpillar and predict what the adult would look like. So that's why we call this complete metamorphosis. It's a complete transformation. And the key to this transformation is the imaginal cells and the imaginal discs, one imaginal disc for each part of the structure and that's what's going to be happening. So as you look at your chrysalis for the next 10 days, waiting for that butterfly to emerge, think about the transformation that's going on inside there. It's really just an amazing, amazing coordination of life. So in the next 10 to 12 days, these caterpillars are going to be going through an amazing transformation 
inside that chrysalis I guess I can't really call them caterpillars anymore and I gotta tell you I had tried four times watching one of my uh, caterpillars hanging in a jay for hours and hours and every time I look away just for a second and the skin comes off it only takes two or three minutes I hope you get to see it sometime and uh, there's other people on the internet look, look them up and you can see what they did so the last thing you might want to do with your chrysalis is, while we're waiting these 10 or 12 days for the monarch adult to emerge, is to see if you can tell if they're male or female. So I'm going to put up a couple slides right now and show you how to distinguish a male chrysalis from a female chrysalis so you can tell what you're going to have when the butterfly emerges from the chrysalis. Take a close look at this chrysalis. You're going to need a magnifying glass or a good camera that does close-ups. And what you want to do is see those two dots up there near the top of the chrysalis. Look at the next segment underneath the dots. Do you see how there's a division there? Do you see how there's a segment, a little line splitting that right down the middle? That's a characteristic of the female chrysalis. So this is a female chrysalis because that segment just below the two dots is split and that makes it a female. So this is also a female chrysalis, as is this chrysalis and this chrysalis. These are all female chrysalises. Now look at this chrysalis. This is a male chrysalis. Do you see how underneath the two dots the line segment doesn't go all the way through. There's just a little dimple there. That line does not se separate that lower segment into two. This is a male chrysalis as well. And again, you can see the two large dots. Look at the segment underneath that, and there's just a little dimple there. There's no straight line dividing that segment underneath the two dots into So let me give you a quiz look at this chrysalis is this a male or a female look at the two dots look what's underneath male or female it's a female because you can see that a line goes all the way through that segment so this one is a female so take a look at this one look at the two black dots and look at the segment just below the black dots is there a line through them? Is it a male or is it a female? This is a male because there's no little line through there and there's just a dimple. So you have fun. You've got 10 or 12 days after your caterpillar forms a chrysalis to determine whether your chrysalis is a male chrysalis or a female chrysalis. Now you know how You'll need a good magnifying glass or a close-up camera, and you'll need to look at it really closely, and you'll be able to figure out before they come out if they're their males or females. My next episode is going to be on monarch emergence and how to tag your butterfly. And I'll show you some ways to handle the emergence and keep the chrysalises in a safe place where the butterflies can safely emerge. Thanks for watching Nature at Your Door. I hope you'll watch my other episodes and keep in touch. If you like what I'm doing, please like, send me comments. I love hearing from you. Subscribe to my channel and I promise we're going to do some more cool stuff in the future. Thanks for watching.